Have you ever wanted to build something on AWS, but you didn't know where to start? Have you ever wanted somebody to guide you from step A through Z, how to deploy something on AWS, where you could actually follow along yourself in your own AWS management console? Well, guess what? You're in luck. I'm Greg Powell, and this is the Thoughtful Techie Cloud YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to teaching you AWS. And today, I'm gonna to walk you through at lab at wellarchitectedlabs.com. I'll put that description uh, link in the description below. So let's go on over here and let me explain how this page is laid out. This is the landing page for AWS Well Architected Labs. The different pillars of the Well Architected framework over here on the left hand column, we're gonna navigate down to the reliability option right here. Now within the reliability option, we're gonna select a 100 level lab. 100 level means this is uh, an introduction. The lab we're gonna do, which is the only choice, is deploy a reliable multi-tier infrastructure using CloudFormation. So think of this as a classic three-tier architecture. Now you may notice over here on the right-hand side of my screen, I already have the AWS Management Console pulled up. You're going to have to have an AWS account to be able to perform this lab. If you have a brand new account, you will get free tier. Now, some of the services in here do cost, so I highly recommend at the end of this lab to terminate the resources so you can suspend any charges uh, that will continue to accrue if you were to remain, uh, if these resources were to remain operational. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and click on the level 100 lab. And let's go down to the introduction. So this is a hands-on lab. I can't stress this enough. Hands-on labs are gonna be very vital for you to learn AWS because you can read about this stuff all day long, but unless you actually put the hands on the keyboard, you're not gonna build that cloud muscle without it. So we're gonna go through a hands-on lab, steps to improve the reliability of a service by using automation to deploy a reliable cloud infrastructure. When this lab is complete, you will have deployed two CloudFormation templates. Now CloudFormation is an AWS service that allows you to uh, form infrastructure as code for your environments so you can deploy things without having to go in and and click on things in a management console. It automates it. You're going to spin up two CloudFormation templates. The first CloudFormation template that we're going to uh, apply is going to be an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, which stands, for, which is also abbreviated as VPC. Virtual Private Cloud is a logically private cordoned off place of the Amazon Cloud that is private to you and secure. The second CloudFormation template we're gonna do is to deploy within that Amazon VPC that the first CloudFormation template spun up a reliable three-tier infrastructure using EC2 distributed across three availability zones. All right, so let's go down here a little bit further and look at the architecture diagram. Let's pull this up and I'm going to magnify this a little bit. Okay, so uh, we have users that are coming in here from the top of the architecture and we have everything wrapped in the AWS cloud. So it's gonna be wrapped in a region. For this lab, we're going to be deploying this infrastructure in the Ohio region, okay? And we're going to have three availability zones as I mentioned earlier. See this here, it's three availability zones. And then we're also going to have a VPC which spans the entirety of those availability zones. And then there's gonna be an internet gateway, a NAT gateway, some elastic load balancing, some EC2 instances spread about that, those three availability zones, and an auto scaling group. And for good measure, 
we're going to have some Amazon DynamoDB here down here at the bottom. So somewhat of a three-tier architecture that we are going to deploy. So this is some exciting stuff. All right, let's close this out. So again, the goals of this lab. By the end of this lab, you will be able to automate infrastructure deployment for a workload and understand how the deployed workload infrastructure contributes to the reliability of the workload. Prerequisites, you need an AWS account and you also need an IAM user that has access to be able to spin up EC2 instances, work with S3 buckets, DynamoDB tables, VPCs, subnets, and internet gateways. All right, so let's go ahead and start the lab. Actually, you know what? Let me back up here real quick. Let's just look at the high level steps here of what we're going to do in the whole lab. The first is again, deploy the VPC using CloudFormation. Second, deploy the web application and infrastructure using the CloudFormation. Three, explore the web application. So after it's actually deployed, we're gonna open up a browser, go to the URL and kind of explore, see what's going on there. We're gonna look through the CloudFormation template to kind of see what's being deployed and look at that a little closer. Then we're gonna tear down the lab. The cost associated with this lab based on what's specced out here is $5.50 per day. That's if you were to leave this thing running for 24 hours. But again, after you've built this and got what you need from it, the learnings, we're going to terminate this lab. Okay, now let's start the lab. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and log into your AWS management console and have that going. So I'm already logged in, as you can see. And we are using our own AWS accounts in this particular instance. So the instructions say sign into the AWS management console as an IAM user who has power user access or administrator access. That's going to be more than enough power to get into this lab. Now, in a production environment, you want to make sure that you're employing least privileges as a best practice or for the purposes of this lab. Power user access or administrator access will definitely get the job done to be able to deploy these resources. Now, the first step after you have logged into this is to configure your AWS region. Our lab is going to be in Ohio, so I'm going to go up here to my management console. Right now, I'm in Northern Virginia, which is U.S. East, and I'm going to hit the drop down and pop this over to Ohio. And now I can confirm I'm over in Ohio because it says Ohio right here. Okay. AWS offers well over 20 regions. I think we're up to 26 now. Last time I checked. Okay, so now we need to deploy the VPC infrastructure. This step will create the VPC and all components using the example CloudFormation template. Let's click on this template here real quick. It is constructed using YAML. Okay, lots of interesting stuff. Uh, this is an AWS CloudFormation sample template for VPC. It creates a multi-tier network appropriate for a web application, including subnets for application, application load balancer, databases, as well as shared services. And it does give you a little warning here. It says, you will be billed for the AWS resources created if you create the full stack in this template, which means uh, definitely terminate this after the fact. We're not looking at any crazy charges. It was like $5.50 if you let this run for a full day. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to definitely terminate this after. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to say Save Link As. And I'm going to put this in my download folder. Here. It says that I already downloaded it earlier. Well, I'm going to download it again just so I can show y'all how it's done. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's get rid of that. All right, now we're going to go over to CloudFormation 
in the Ohio region. Let's go up here to the search bar and search for cloud formation, just in case you don't already have it up. Cloud formation, there it is. Click on that. Now, I will tell you from time to time, the AWS Management Console can change. If your console looks a little bit different than mine, the general premise of navigating the console is the same, so hopefully you can, can figure it out. But what we're looking for when we go to CloudFormation is Create Stack. All righty, Create Stack, and we want to go to Upload a Template. So let's upload a template, and now we're going to choose a file. And remember, I stored mine in the Downloads folder. So let's go to Download folder here. And where is my YAML? Boom, there's my YAML. Okay, I've opened up that file. Okay, and then I want to click on Next. Let's enter a stack name. For this lab, we're gonna use Web App 1 VPC. And it says match the case. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that here. Nice and easy. Paste that into the stack name. Now for the parameters, these are all the parameters of things we can change. Parameters may be left as defaults. You can find out more in the description of each. Okay, we're gonna take the defaults for the parameters, all right? Okay, so let's just, at the bottom of the page, these are all the parameters. We're gonna take the defaults. I'm gonna click Next. Then it says, in this lab, we're gonna use tags, which are key value pairs that can help you identify your stack. Enter owner in the left column, which is the key, and your email address in the right column, which is a value. Okay, let's see here. These are the tags here. So for the key, I'm gonna enter owner. <laughs> and then for my email address, let's do uh, greg at email.com. <laughs> for our uh, value. Okay. What else we got going here? Okay, we've done that. Review the information for the stack. When you're satisfied with the configuration at the bottom of the page, check I acknowledge that the AWS CloudFormation might create IAM resources with custom names, then click Create the Stack. Okay, let's go to the bottom here. Okay, I think we have to hit, we're going to have to hit next first before we see that. Okay, so review Web App 1 VPC. There's a template, the parameters that are set. And then at the very bottom here, we are going to see, yes, that message. So again, there's some different subtleties in the management console. Probably the time that this lab was created, the console was a little bit different, but uh, you can kind of see where I'm, you know, Follow along still. Let's acknowledge this. And let's say create the stack. Woohoo! Okay, so this stack is creating. This is going to take a few minutes. But while that's happening, we are going to, you can click refresh button to check on the current status. Create in progress. Okay, let's go over to cloud formation. View the stacks. Okay. So right now it says create in progress. I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back to this here once the stack has built out. Be back with you in a second. Okay, we are back and that stack has created as indicated by the create complete. Let's go in here and click on the web app one VPC, which is what we named our stack just to kind of see what it did. Uh, we're gonna go into the events to see what it created. Here's all the timestamps. I've got things in a split screen view, so I recommend to enlarge this so you can kind of see what's going from left to right. But I uh, created a number of different resources, NAT gateways, uh, several of those, subnets, the internet gateways, everything you saw in that diagram was created 
in this uh, in this cloud formation stack. Okay. So once that create complete is indicated, we go to the next step. All right, now we need to download the CloudFormation template staticwebapp.yaml. So we're gonna right click on this. Very similar procedures to what we just did. Save this somewhere handy where you can get it. And then we're gonna go back over to CloudFormation again, just like we were. Gonna to go to create stack. And then we're gonna navigate up here to the top where it says stacks. Click on that. And we need to make sure that we are saying create the stack with new resources. So we're gonna click that drop down, click on with new resources, boom. Which is weird because it takes us back to right where we came from. So, yeah, as I was mentioning, sometimes the AWS Management Console changes, but we're in the right place. Template is ready. And let's go ahead and upload that. Upload the template. Choose the file. Static web app dot YAML. Open this. Okay, I'm going to click on next. For the stack name, use CloudFormation Lab. So let's copy this. Put it over here in the stack name. Look over the parameters and their default values. Okay, so we're going to just take the default values. Naming prefix, web app one. VC, VPC stack imports. We'll take all the defaults on this. Let's click next. For configure stack options, we recommend configuring the tags as we did earlier. Go to the top, I'm gonna say owner for the key. And then for the value, we're just gonna put, I'm gonna put it greg at email.com. <laughs> Y'all like my email address? <laughs> All right. We're going to review this. Everything is looking good. All right. Let's just say next. Boom. Okay, go down here to the bottom. Take all the defaults. Okay, everything is looking good. Yes, we understand you might create some IAM stuff. Understood. Click on that like before. And let's say create the stack. Okay. And the create is in progress. Let's let that do its thing. I'm going to put this on pause and I'll be back when the stack creates. Okay, we're back. That stack has created. Let's just flip through to take a look at what we got here. Now again, these are the resources that are being deployed within that virtual private cloud that we created earlier with that first CloudFormation template. Okay, so that's good to go. Let's go back over to our directions. When it shows create complete, then you are finished with this step. Boom, next step. Explore the web application. Now for the fun part. Go to the CloudFormation console and wait until CloudFormation lab stack is complete. Okay, we already confirmed that. Uh, we wanna go to the CloudFormation lab stack and click on outputs. So let's go back up to here. Here's the outputs. Again, this is for the second template that we labeled CloudFormation lab. Go to the outputs here. Okay. Now we notice that it creates a website URL. This is a URL to the static website that was just created via the CloudFormation template. 
for the key website URL, copy the value. All right, let's copy the value here. Right click on this and say copy link address. Now we're gonna go to a URL and bring the site up. So let's go over to over here and put in the address. Enjoy some classic television, what to watch, EC2 metadata. This is availability, availability zone, US East 2B. Troubleshooting, if you see an error such as 502 bad gateway, then wait 60 seconds and try again. It takes some time for the service to initialize. Okay, well, we're pretty good here because we see what we're looking at. So this website simulates a recommendation engine making personalized suggestions for classic television shows. You should see a note that follows with the following features. Area A shows a personalized recommendation. Okay, this is a personalized, this is area A up here. The usernames, television show names, and this mapping are in DynamoDB table, which is simulating the recommendation service. Oh, that's cool. We'll go over and take a look at the DynamoDB service to see if we can find that table. Area B shows metadata. All right, this is area B right here, the metadata. The instance ID and the availability zone enable you to see which EC2 server and availability zone were used for each request. Use the architectural diagram as you explore the site. Remember there's one EC2 instance deployed per availability zone. Refresh the site several times and note the EC2 instance and the availability zone change, which you can confirm with the metadata. Nice. The elastic load balancer is used here. An, elastic, an application load balancer receives each request and distributes it's among and distributes it among the available EC2 server instances across the availability zones. The requests are stateless and therefore can be routed to any of the available EC2 instances. That's great. The requests are stateless, so if there's any EC2 instance that has an issue, another EC2 instance can pick up that request. The EC2 instances are in an Amazon EC2 auto scaling group. This auto scaling group was configured to maintain three instances and therefore if one instance is detected as unhealthy, it will be replaced to maintain the three instances. Okay, this is really cool. Let's go ahead and explore some of this stuff because I just threw a lot at you here. So let's zoom in on this. Okay, we have this here. Let's refresh it. Okay, so that's US East 2B, mad about you. Now we have, says, Sarah, your recommendation is MASH. This is US 2A, which is great, and it's a different recommendation. Let's refresh it again. Mad about you, US East 2C. This is a different uh, availability zone here. Let's refresh it again. Saria recommendation is MASH, US East 2B. So that's working as described. We have three EC2 instances uh, performing as we would expect. Let's see what else we can look at here. And we know they're going across multiple availability zones. All right, let's go check on those EC2 instances in the management console. So let's go over to services. Let's type EC2. This is the part where after you've deployed stuff, you're going to go in the management console just to kind of explore, see what's going on, right? Now, instances running. Your console may look different, but uh, this is what mine looks like. I have three here, so I'm going to click on instances running. I've got three instances running. These are the web apps that we created earlier. Your T3 micros. And those are in US 
East 2A, 2B, and 2C. Cool. Alrighty. Yeah, what else can we look at here? Let's look at low balancers. This is that low balancer that was created with the uh, the CloudFormation templates. Nice. Okay. Now let's go over to auto scaling groups. The auto scaling group is the information that tells the load balancer how to spawn these EC2 instances up. So we have the desired capacity of three, minimum capacity of three, and maximum capacity of three. So if any of those EC2 instances were to go offline, we would, uh, the auto scaling group would respawn that EC2 instance. This is very cool. Now we'll come back to that in a minute because what we'll do is we'll kill one of those EC2 instances and then we'll see if that auto scaling group will dynamically reconfigure one. Okay, so let's go over to DynamoDB and look for that table that it was talking about. It's amazing how all this stuff can be templatized. Okay, so we're in DynamoDB. Let's go to tables. Yep, here we go. The recommendation service table right here. Okay, this, this view is kind of weird because explore the table items. Let's do that. Let's back out of here because there we go. I have to make this smaller so we can see. I know this is kind of small, but this is the way we, the only way we can see the tables. So we got MASH, Threes Company. Yes, yeah, so this is just simulating the table, username, and this populates the website. Let's go back to making this bigger again. Now let's do something cool here. Let's go into services, EC2, and I'm going to terminate one of these EC2 instances. Remember that auto scaling group is configured to always have three. So I'm gonna go in here and terminate this particular instance. So I'm gonna check mark this, and then I'm gonna go up to instance state while well, I have a check mark and I'm going to terminate this. Terminate it. Okay, so now this is terminating. This is going to take a little bit. We're going to have to wait till a health check fails until the auto scaling group launches a new template. So I'm going to pause it here and then we'll come back here shortly to check out to see if this auto scaling group respond a replacement EC2 instance, and then we'll retest the application while this is happening. Actually, you know what, before we go, okay, this is terminated. Now let's go back to the resiliency workshop. We have a EC2 fleet of three instances. One of them failed. The application should still run. So let's refresh this. Mad about you, US2C, US2B, all in the family for Bob. Refresh it again. Manual is getting a mad about you. So the application still works. So this is the really cool thing about decoupling your cloud architecture and making it stateless. You get to see this in real time, which is uh, really cool. You know, we might not have to cut back. Let's go back over to instances and let's do a refresh here. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's already relaunched another. That was fast. We just terminated it. <laughs> it's already back up. 
So yeah, that's real neat. Okay, now let's just... Uh, in the spirit of the Well Architected Framework, let's talk about the Well Architected best practices we used within the reliability pillar. pillar. So we made a highly available network connectivity for workload public endpoints. We implemented loosely coupled dependencies. So even when that EC2 instance failed, I made it fail, the application still worked while another EC2 instance came back online. We deployed the workload in multiple locations. So we deployed it across three availability zones and we automated healing on all layers. So when something fails, on that EC2 fleet, it comes back. And we've deployed the cloud infrastructure that can support a highly reliable workload. Nice. And let's see here. Explore the CloudFormation template. Let's go back over to CloudFormation and look at this real quick. CloudFormation. And let's click on this web app VPC. And let's see how we can take a look at this. Click the template tab. There we go. Here's a template tab. Let me see what I can do here back out of here. This is extremely small, <laughs> but yeah, this is nothing terribly exciting to look at, but this would be really good for you to reverse engineer and look at what's in the YAML file and compare that with what is actually built. So I'll let you do this in your own time here. Now, while we're at it, please tear down this lab. You can pause this. YouTube video here right now and kind of explore around. But when you're done with this, let's go ahead and terminate it. Very easy. Let's go back to these stacks. Let's go to select cloud formation lab, stack actions. Now let's go to, let's see, oh, delete. There we go. <laughs> select the uh, corresponding stack and then delete it yes we understand it's going to delete boom okay we're deleting that one in progress and then we'll go down the web app one vpc and delete that one delete these will take some time to delete and want to confirm it what you do is you just you'll refresh this and then you'll go to your various services go to the load balancer go to the ec2 area DynamoDB and make sure all the stuff gets deleted, but don't do that until the delete fully uh, progresses. Matter of fact, what we can probably do is go over here to EC2 just to see if things have begun to terminate. Wouldn't be surprised if they have. Oh yeah, the instances are already gone. Let's go over to the DynamoDB table, see if that's there. DynamoDB table and tables oh yeah no tables so that's it folks we're at the conclusion of this lab i hope you enjoyed building a multi-tier architecture on aws using infrastructure as code via cloud formation if you like this make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe make sure you share this with your friends and let me know what labs or AWS topics you'd like for me to talk about next. Thank you. See you around.